Welcome to Badminton Unlimited. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, we take you back in time to discover how the first Yonex racket came into existence. First, Cho Tian Chen is elated to have qualified for the elite top eight competition. And Olympics bronze medalist Marcus Ellis reflects on his improbable Rio 2016 run. You know, one point here or one point there, and we would have lost in the group stage. The Macau Open 2018 made its bow on the HSBC BWF World Tour at the Tapsec Multisport Pavilion last week. A Super 300 tournament, this year's edition was a chance for Macanese fans to be entertained by some of badminton's best. An all Hong Kong contest began finals day as world number no. four duo Tang Chun Man and Sir Ing Sweat took on compatriots Li Jun Hei and Chao Hoi Wa. In a match lasting just over the half hour mark, Tang and Tzu gave a confident display against their teammates who struggled to impose themselves. 21 14, 21 15 read the final score. Tang and Tzu adding a second World Tour title to their names after their Peridua Malaysia Masters win in January. Women's singles saw top seed Michelle Lee going up against China's Han Yu. After a strong start, Lee's fortunes took a turn in the closing stages of the first game as Han made a late rally to take a 1 0 lead. It only served to fuel the fire of the Canadian shuttler, who responded brilliantly to take the next two games in convincing fashion. Final score, 23-25, 21-17, 21-15 to the Pan Am champion. The world number 18 also picked up her maiden world tour title this year. I think I'm very happy that uh, I was able to win the title and uh, it was a very tough match and I'm glad I'm on the winning side. I think I'm going to go see my grandma today in Hong Kong and uh, my mom is here today so I'm very happy that she was able to, to witness me winning the champion and I think uh, I'm very happy. Also grabbing his first world tour crown was former world number one Li Hyun Il when he defeated China's young gun Zhou Juqi in straight games. A veteran at 38 years old, the Korean let his experience do the talking against Zhou, who was left chasing shadows in the opening game. The Chinese player approached the second game with better composure, but eventually his inexperience told. 21-9, 21-19 to Lee, who's showing no signs of slowing down. And is this the chance? Yes, it is. There was plenty for Malaysians to cheer about as their women's doubles pair of Vivian Hu and Yak Chen Wen got the better of Mizato Aratama and Akane Watanabe. Despite Japan's well-known strength in the category, Hu and Yap remained unfazed by that reputation as they took the match to the world number 30 duo. Hu and Yap celebrated a first victory for their fledgling partnership after 39 minutes, with a final score of 21-15, 22-20. Men's double saw an entertaining Korean showdown with Kim Gi Jung and Lee Yong Dae battling it out against compatriots Ko Sung Hyun and Shin Baek Chiol. A great start by the 2014 world champions Ko and Shin saw the pair clinch the first game, only to see their opponents storm back in the second to force a decider. In a closely fought game, it was Kim and Lee who eventually triumphed. 
네, 이제 저랑 이제 김기정 선수가 이제 파트너를 맞춘 지 얼마 되지 않았는데 이번 대회 때는 어, 16강전부터 되게 어려운 경기를 결승 대까지 했던 것 같아요. 그래서 이번 마카오 오픈을 계기로 어, 좀 자신감을 찾고 할수 있을 것 같고요. 오늘 승리의 그런 여운은 오늘까지 잘 어, 간직한 다음에 또 다음 대회들이 많이 있기 때문에 그 대회들에서 또 다시 이 자신감을 바탕으로 잘 만들어서 잘할 수 있도록 하, 하겠습니다. With just four tournaments left on the HSBC BWF World Tour this year, it's crunch time for players trying to make the cut for the season-ending showcase, the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals. Amongst the lucky few who have booked their ticket to Guangzhou is Cho Tian Chen. Three titles and two runner-up finishes have resulted in the Chinese Taipei player leading the HSBC race to Guangzhou rankings. 觉得就是今年度表现最好的八个球员可以去打嘛那就很荣幸可以继续参加希望自己持续表现到年终赛大家实力都差不多只是可能种子序不一样就是我也不会把自己摆得很高的位置我觉得我还是比较想小选手一样
スチールのラケットアルミのラケットで業界の中でもいち早くカーボンを使ったラケットに変わっていきました。Yonayama Company Limited then expanded their business into shuttlecocks in 1965. With badminton's fast growing popularity in Japan, Mr. Yonayama wanted to provide the highest quality equipment to all those who wanted to play. 1965年より製造開始しました1968年現在のうちに東京工場を新築バドミントンラケットに続く新規事業として始めました。世界基準のシャトルコックを必要とした米山実社長の号令で始まりました当時世界の最高の水取り球はガチョウ球日本では試合球にアヒル球が使われていました1972年の日中国交正常化により中国のガチョウ原毛が入手可能となり世界一のシャトル作りにより一層の拍車がかかりました It was in 1974 that Yonayama changed their name to Yonex And a decade later, they made their presence known by becoming the title sponsor of the prestigious All England Championships. A proud moment in their badminton history, not only for showing how far they'd come as a business, but it was also the debut of the Yonex Feather Shuttlecock at an international tournament. This was the first time in 1984. 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 300ダースで大会が終了耐久性や品質が高く評価されましたその信頼は今も脈々と受け継がれていますこれはヨネックスの宝と言えます And as they say, the rest is history Yonex continue to evolve and innovate exemplified by their new state-of-the-art racket manufacturing headquarters in Niigata while creating the highest quality product To ensure they remain a trusted and loved name around the world. Coming up after this short break, Chris Langridge reflects on a challenging period after winning Olympic bronze. So, in the space of kind of, I don't know, 16 months, a lot of difficult things happened for you know, both of us, and it's hard to bounce back from. Plus, we round up all the action from the European Para Badminton Championships 2018. Two years ago, Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge stole the limelight at the Rio Olympics by claiming an unexpected bronze medal. Few had expected the duo to shine at the Summer Games. Even the English pair knew they were not amongst the favourites and that qualification in itself was an achievement, as only 16 men's doubles pairs made it to Brazil. It was tough to be honest.、Um, we were a little bit up and down in qualifying, just with all sorts of what's happening, a few injuries, and you have to play a certain amount of tournaments, you get a few bad draws. And our ranking was okay, but it wasn't great. So we were kind of one of the pairs nearer the lower end of being able to qualify. And I think that does make it a lot harder because you have more pressure, and then you kind of you force it a little bit. You try and play more tournaments, and it doesn't really help you to do that because you can't train as well, you're traveling a lot, and it's not putting you in a, in a great place. There was no looking back once Ellis and Langridge got to the Olympics. Drawn in a tough group, the then 22nd ranked duo lost their first match against second seeds Matthias Bowe and Karsten Mogensen. This meant that their hope of progressing hinged on winning their remaining matches. The first upset came with victory over Korea's world number three pairing, Kim Gi Jong and Kim Sa Rang. You know, we saved match points in the second set. You know, one point here or one point there, and we would have lost in the group stage.、Uh, and to think how far we actually went. But I think my biggest memory of that particular match was how far、um, we were up in the third set. And I think they, they got maybe like five or six points in a row when we were on match point. <laughs> I was just worried that it was all going to come crashing down、uh, after all our hard work. But luckily, I think it was around, I think they were on about 18 or something like that. And we managed to convert that point. So, you know, that was probably my biggest memory of the group stage. The British pair then stormed into the semi finals with another stunning upset over Japan's eighth ranked Hiroyuki Endo and Kenichi Hayakawa. Although they were unable to overcome the eventual gold medalists, they still had one more chance to play for a podium place when they met Chai Biao and Hong Wei. Before I went on court, I, I do remember thinking. Like, that we, we have like nothing to lose here. And 
I had a look at the Chinese guys and I could see fear in their eyes about what they had to lose. I think it gave me confidence. We were the underdogs and I think sometimes it's very dangerous to be an underdog because the amount of pressure that's on the people who are expected to win. Um, and I think that really showed in that final match. We knew it was going to be a close game in regards to it was going to be tense, it was maybe not going to be the prettiest of matches, but obviously to win was you know, an incredible feeling that I don't think either of us will ever forget that, that moment when we actually did realise that we'd won. Personally, obviously, it's, it's something that we'll remember forever. I'm sure no matter what we end up doing, we'll struggle to achieve more, more than that and be prouder than, prouder than anything. But I think it, it does show that anyone can achieve you know, what we achieved, regardless of you know, what country you've come from, what ranking you are, whether you're seeded or not, you can do it. It's just sometimes all of the things have to fall into place. And I'm just very proud of both of us that we were able to take that opportunity when it was given to us. Following their Olympics bronze medal exploits, the future looked bright for Ellis and Langridge. Unfortunately, a sequence of unexpected events meant that they were unable to build on that success. If I'm brutally honest, I think there's a lot of things that have happened off the court that have affected kind of some of our results. Um, for myself anyway, I've had twin girls and you know I've got a lot of respect for everyone out there who's got twins because it's, it's very tough. I mean, it's a lot harder than I ever thought. Uh, I've managed to break my hand as well, another difficult thing. Then we lost all of our funding. Um, so in the space of kind of, I don't know, 16 months, a lot of difficult things happened for you know both of us. And, it's hard to bounce back from. It's taken us a bit of time, especially myself, because the first probably six months of having twins, I, you know, I didn't know what was going on. Didn't know what day it was. I didn't know anything, you know. And then I started to kind of get used to it. You understand what's happening and, and slowly get back into a routine and a cycle. And I could feel my game starting to come back. Uh, but then I broke my hand. So that was another kind of almost six months out. So it has been a really tough time. Um, but now I do feel we're slowly getting back on track. And, you know, we're showing it in our performances. They're, they're coming back. I think from this point forward, you know, all eyes have to be on the, on the next Olympic cycle. How we're going to qualify? Do we want to keep this going? Can we, can we carry on? Um, you know, we've had all those discussions. Um, we, do, we do want to qualify. We do want to go there and we do, we do want to hopefully replicate what we've done. With four weeks to go till qualification for the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals is concluded, players converge in Fuzhou to gain some valuable points. In the next 90 seconds, here's all you need to know about the Fuzhou China Open 2018. The last of five Super 750 events runs from November the 6th to the 11th. The Fuzhou China Open 2018 will be held at the Haijia Olympic Sports Center. Beside the 700,000 US dollars up for grabs, winners of this year's edition have the added incentive of earning some precious points in their race to qualify for the year-end showpiece in Guangzhou. Here's a look at the men's single seedings. This year's most decorated player, Kento Momota, is seeded first, followed by All England champion, She Yuqi. Cho Tian Chen, who leads the HSBC race to Guangzhou rankings, is seeded fourth. The sixth seed, and possibly the player to cause an upset, is China's Chen Long. The 29-year-old is high on confidence, having beaten the top two seeds, Momota and Xie, en route to his maiden title in Paris two weeks ago. With several mixed doubles pairs still in the running to qualify for the World Tour Finals, competition will be intense. Top seeds Zheng Su Wei and Huang Ya Chong are assured of a spot in Guangzhou, but this will not stop them from chasing their ninth title of the year. The only seeded European duo, Matthias Christensen and Christina Pedersen, will be looking to better their runners-up performance in Fuzhou last year. With the season drawing to a close, players will give their last ounce of energy in the quest for title glory. The Fuzhou China Open 2018 is definitely not to be missed.
a shot. What a match. Delighted with that win. It was an absolute thriller. Rodez France hosted the VYV BWF European Para Badminton Championships 2018 this past week. The biennial event now a jewel in the city's crown, having proven to the world that they're capable of hosting the best sporting events. For the city and the environment, they are very proud to welcome this, uh, this uh, championship here in Rodez. Uh, after the uh, first event in 2012, they were uh, expecting uh, more, much more. So now it's, uh, it is, uh, uh, they are very, very happy, very proud. Uh, uh, we are the city with almost 50,000 50, uh, uh, people and uh, people are joining us, they, they come. Uh, to, us, to, to see the matches, so we are very happy about that. So it's for also for the development of para badminton in our region, uh, and so this is very, very interesting for us. The best of Europe's para badminton players congregated in this ancient French city to battle for the honour of being called European champion. For the French Badminton Federation, it was an important moment not only as hosts, but also for their players, as this would be the final European Championship before the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. We are looking forward to Tokyo with, uh, with great hope. Uh, we've got good players, so we, ho we hope that we will get some medals, uh, as many as possible, of course. And we thought that it was a good thing that the last uh, European Championship before Tokyo would be held in France. That's one of the reasons that we did candidate for that uh, tournament. And to the nation's delight, one of their own turned out to be one of the most successful players of the tournament. Lucas Mazur, reigning European and world champion in the men's singles SL4 category, was just one of three players to reach three finals, triumphant in two of them. Mazur won mixed doubles SL3 to SU5 category with partner Faustin Noel 21-19-21-10 before successfully defending his men's singles SL4 crown against second seed Rickard Nielsen of Sweden 21-7-21-9. The victory was his third successive European Championship. I feel very proud of my competition. A little bit disappointed of the result in men's double, we, we lost in final, but very proud of the week, yeah. It's first time here in France that uh, it's an European Championship are organized, so uh, every competition for me is uh, special, so uh, always uh, very proud of my competition when I won. England were the most successful nation with seven golds at the event and multiple gold medal winners in Rachel Chung, Martin Rook and Jack Shepherd. Kristen Coombs and Shepard continued their domination of the men's SS6 category, winning the men's doubles gold before facing off against each other in the men's singles final. In a battle between the reigning world and European champions, it was Shepard who prevailed in a tough match, beating Coombs 17-21, 21-10, 21-11. It means a lot because um, I'm currently at the top of the game, so everyone uh, from around the world, uh, looking up to me and wanting to beat me. Um, so, so it's an amazing place to be. We play each other so much, so the only pressure was that it was a new venue and a new meaning to it. Um, but amazing to become uh, world champion and European champion now. So, The match of the tournament, though, was the women's singles wheelchair one final where Valeska Knobloch of Germany dethroned the defending and three-time European champion, Karin Suter Erat, 12-21, 21-19, 28-26, in a 55-minute classic to signal a change of guard in the discipline. I still cannot believe it, actually. It's, it's crazy. I mean, I won against her. That's, that's one thing I, I wanted um, 100%, and now European champion, Sounds strange, but it's good. 
A total of 128 medals awarded on finals day across 22 events, bringing to a close another successful edition of the European Para Badminton Championships. Next week, we speak to 18-year-old Nat Nguyen, who aspires to be world number one, and he just can't get enough of the sport. If I had to summarize my life, it would probably be 90% of badminton. Everything is just badminton. I'm, just, I'm kind of addicted. Meanwhile, for all the latest stories and features on the HSBC BWF World Tour, log on to bwfworldtour.com.